Hey, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the second to the last panel of the day. We've got, uh, we've got a, a, a lot of announcements going on in this one, and uh, it's been a great day so far. I think everybody's had a, had a fun time here in the panels and also picking up original artwork during the show. But uh, tonight we've got a, uh, you know, well, let's let me let me first bring Matt in here because Matt, uh, you know, you've uh, you've got a lot of things going on in your life right now. You've been a regular on the channel in the chat, and uh, I, ha you know, and I don't want to leave Simone in the green. You know, I, I might as well just bring him out too. We've got so many Please, things yeah. to talk about tonight. Hey, hey Simone, guys. how you doing, man? Uh, good, good. You guys, how good? We are good, and you're you're in uh, Tokyo. I, I yeah, totally forgot that you were you were traveling and you weren't in Italy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm in the future right now. Like, I love that. <laughs> it's Sunday. It's Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Have you already had breakfast and you're raring to go? Yeah. Done. All done. Yeah. It's like uh, nine p uh, nine a.m. right now. Well, that's uh, that's yeah. We've we've done a few regular shows with uh, the next Comic Car crew, and it's always weird to having them in the morning. But it works out well at the end of the day, even when we do the Bob Layton things, Matt. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I'm glad you guys could do this one. We've, uh, you know, this this was something that kind of came into our schedule, you know, near the end of things. But you you guys have had something that you've been working on for quite a while. And I see Matt even in his uh, signature there has the Detulio Art Collective as part of it. And uh, Matt, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what the Tulio Art Collective is? I know I've seen a few announcements socially, but uh, yeah, uh, appreciate it. Yeah, um, so been very passionate about, um, you know original comic art for a long time, started in comics, uh, kind of moved forward into original art. You know, I figured I loved the, holding the comic book so much. Wouldn't it be nice to hold the real page or hold the cover and uh, started off with convention sketches, worked my way up. And one of the main reasons I really wanted to get involved uh, in the whole original art game was because of the community. A lot of the people that I met were just so amazing. Uh, everybody's just really great. Um, so I worked pretty hard for a while and I got to start to rep to Simone Bianchi. Uh, I have to give a huge shout out to Gloria and Simone for uh, giving me the chance to work with them, work with them for about two years now. And uh, finally felt like I had my footing in the uh, in the game enough to where I was able to take on another artist and, uh, you know, kind of went from being a one artist guy to really opening up a team and, you know, being around. So I launched uh, the Tulio Art Collective. Uh, really named it the Tulio Art Collective uh, for one reason, because a collective is uh, a group of like-minded people all working together, you know, towards the same goal. And uh, that's what I really feel the comic art community is about. Um, there's just so many great people, uh, you know, uh, that just try to help you out. That, you know, they mentioned a piece of you, you know, I know I'm a Black Bull collector, Bill Cyclops collector, you know, if you tag each other, you do what you can. Um, so when I launched it, I was uh, looking for another artist to bring on. Um, you know, I view, uh, you know, quality over quantity. I really feel like each artist that I have deserves, you know, a ton of attention. They need to be, you know, the primary focus of everything that's going on to be able to, uh, you know, really get them out there and really have clients understand their work. And from the first time I saw Simone's work, and this is uh, very easy for me to say is I'm not a DC collector whatsoever. So, um, you know, but I can discern beautiful artwork from regular artwork at any at any point. And when I saw Simone's work, uh, I was just blown away. Um, you know, it took a while and we, you know, we worked very hard together, uh, some time in Florence and some time in his hometown. And he came, I went to visit him and he came to visit me and we were able to work it out. And uh, uh, as of yesterday, we announced that Simone and I will be working together. He will be the, you know, the second artist. So now it's Simone Squared uh, at the Tulio Art Collective. <laughs> Got Simone Bianchi and uh, Simone. Are there any more artists named Simone that you can, you can uh, start talking to? <laughs> you gotta be Italian. Your first name's got to be Simone, and you have to be a comic art guy for me to, for me to work with you. So, uh, I really, I really uh, am super thankful uh, for the opportunity that Simone has given me to uh, for us to work together. Um, I'm very excited because we've got a lot of stuff not only for you guys tonight, uh, but for the near future, the distant future, conventions. Uh, we've got some really amazing things planned, and uh, I couldn't be more thankful to have Simone on uh, the, the Truly Art Collective team. Be dropping a website by the end of the month with uh, a lot of my personal collection for sale um you know over 150 pieces of original art a lot of original art from simone de mio simone bianchi so um a lot of cool things are going on very excited and uh just happy to be here and participate in my first panel of uh comic art fans life well, that's uh fantastic so uh, simone when did you first meet matt i mean it has, on one of his many excursions to italy or <laughs> uh, no i <laughs> <laughs> I think to meet the first time in Orlando, right? Right? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
uh, yeah, uh, during a, a megacon uh, because met working with uh, Simone Bianchi, the other Simone of the team. Uh, yeah, and just just meet and talk about all the things and have some fun. And yeah, this is the first first time in Orlando, if I remember good. Yeah. Everything starts in Orlando, as Jason said. It does, doesn't yeah. it? I was yeah. Just yeah. Thinking, <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one, Jason. And yeah, I mean, I had met Simone before once or twice, just said hello to him, um, you know, never really uh, gotten a chance to talk with him. And um, when I was able to see his art um, at Megacon, they did the launch of him being the artist for Batman and Robin. He was there as a special guest and uh, I was able to really see his art. And I'm a huge, you know, uh, manga naruto dragon ball z <laughs> yeah. fan and when i was able yeah. to see some of the styles he was using anime manga styles transitioning over into comic books uh it was really right I, up I, i'm in tokyo i'm in tokyo right now for some reasons yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> so uh so we could talk a bit about uh your, your style since matt's talking you know brought that up already and we had uh I had Koi Fam on a few hours ago for a panel, and when I mentioned that you were one of the later panels, he, you know, he remarked about, "I can't tell if this guy is digital or traditional, but I love his work." And that's something that when we uh, we talked a few days ago, uh, I think uh, you know, Kazra and I said the same thing to you. You know, is that it's true? It's it's quite amazing that you know your style is so slick. You literally oh, can't tell you. if it's uh, traditional or not, and I think that that. That's just, you know, that's, it's amazing. And, you know, I don't know, you know, have you always drawn that way or is this a style that you kind of work towards because you really wanted to have that slick feel to your work? Yeah. Um, yeah, just, uh, I, I'm a, a, a traditional artist right now, just doing the, uh, the inks in traditional, because, because I started my career as an inker, as a traditional inker some years ago. And, um, um, improve some skills in traditional use uh, a lot of techniques like brush or sponge or a lot of techniques in in, uh, in traditional and after some years uh, of exclusive uh, digital work i try to uh, return return it to, to to some uh, in traditional because it's uh, for me is is a, i have an amazing feeling with uh, paper and brush and inks and i'm so happy to to see the uh, to see uh, the, the the traditional work, and when I when when I'm working digital, I'm so happy. I I, I love to work in digital, but I prefer working traditional for mm -hmm. some reason, like the paper, uh, the, the the brush, the inks, because I don't know. It's I prefer right now, and but um, I, I do a lot of pages in in digital some years ago, and I improve a lot some technique, and after doing. A lot of pages in digital. I try to uh, to do the same technique in traditional. Try to to find some new way to ink in traditional, like uh, some gradient with sponge. I, I I tried a lot of techniques. I tried a lot of techniques to improve my uh, traditional work. And after some uh, a couple of years, right now I'm so happy to uh, to have a balance to digital and traditional. And it's good for my work because sometimes I don't have the time and I'm doing digital work, but every every time I have uh, um, a good a, a good deadline, I I try to do all in the in a traditional and after scan and yeah I'm trying yeah. to do my best. And I think you know one thing uh, I saw Carl put in the chat. It's super important to know is that you know uh, Simone does color his own traditional work yeah. digitally as well. So all the yeah. stuff you see on the inside of Batman and Robin or the covers for Brave and the Bold or anything is he, he does the, uh, the colors, you know, digitally over his traditional work and it's mm -hmm. able to save a lot of time. And I think, uh, you know, Simone has a very unique skill set in that he's very good at traditional and digital. Sometimes it's hard to uh, mesh those together. And I think what he's been able to do is seeing what's done digitally and being able to transfer it over and make it done traditionally to then add his color palette, which is very different uh, than a lot of other previous Batman artists, not to say that the other ones weren't good by any means. It's just very different. And, um, you know, the 
the palleting and the angles and the gradient that he uses on his traditional work then transitions over to be colored digitally by him. And he has a vision from start to finish of how to get there. And uh, it's a very cool process to, to watch. Uh, he made a mention of it. Simone, do you happen to have one? Do you happen to have one of the sponges close to you where you could show it? Uh, yeah. Because yeah. his sponging technique, I saw somebody in the chat, it moved. Uh, uh, Linda said, you know, his gradients are insanely good. And to watch him create those gradient effects is really, a, it's really amazing. He uses an ink and a, these sponges. It's, uh, it's an amazing, amazing thing to watch come to life. It's really cool. So that's how he gets that effect. And it was trial and error, right, Simona? You just kept working until you found something that you felt very comfortable with. And when you yep. hit it, you're like, that's it. This is what I'm moving forward with. And thankfully you did because the artwork you do <laughs> up beautifully. Thanks, Matt. Thanks so much. And I did have a, uh, you know, just a couple pieces we could look at, but, yeah. um, but yeah, yeah, the thing that to me, it, it, it's the way you handle the gradients, really, the fact that they blend together so smoothly. And, uh, you know, in your traditional work, that's why it doesn't look traditional, because the, everything is, is so polished in that in that way that you we, we expect out of digital, uh, you know, that we expect to see these gradients done uh, in a uh, non traditional way. And yet you're doing that, that here. And like you said, you do work in both. And the fact that you can kind of skip between uh, effectively both mediums and approaches to your artwork yeah. is, is pretty, pretty special. I don't think, you know, that, that, that's Thank not you. something that can easily be done where the styles aren't going to look distinctly different. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I, I try to do this thing because um, I I don't like if the, my traditional work and my digital work change. Just try to doing the same thing uh, mm -hmm. because sometimes I have to do some traditional pages, some digital page in the same book, and uh, I'm I try to do my best to to uh, if uh, people don't see the difference because it's not good to see the difference inside the same book and i try to improve the technique for this reason yeah well it's uh it's it's fantastic i mean even when i was looking at these things it's still hard hard to imagine that they are not done non-traditionally so yeah, it, yeah it's it's control. a real it's a real feat to watch and it's something i think i see a couple of people in the chat i i agree you will see um, you know, other people starting to use a sponging technique or whatever it was, but you know, the famous line often replicated, never duplicated. So it'll be, uh, he's taken a very long time to get to where he is. Um, you know, background Simone, it, what'd you say? You, you went to school, you were going to be bio, you were in biology, correct? And yep. he took one art class and that was it. Biology was out the window. And, uh, <laughs> and what I love about him. But yeah, exactly, exactly. And what I loved about his story, uh, you know, much differently from Simone Bianchi on the other team, who was, you know, yeah. born, born a painter, he was born with a paintbrush in his hand, his father was painting, he thought his friends, you know, were painting at home like he was. Uh, I really liked that Simone had to have his journey to, to get to where he is now. Uh, he had to have the experiences to get to where he is and to find his own way and, and create these techniques that really set him completely apart from a lot of other artists out there right now. And uh, the best part about it is he's not done, you know, uh, continuing to grow and try new things. Uh, we were recently in yeah. Florence together and um, Simone Bianchi had a workshop and Simone DiMio attended and uh, he attempted his first ever fully painted piece uh, on his own. Mm -hmm. and, well, I know Simone so hard. wasn't so hard. very, I know you weren't very happy uh, with it, but I thought it was great. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> no, it was, uh, just, just because uh, I, I'm doing black and white work and traditional and doing a full painter one it's so hard but it's funny so funny i, I need to improve but it's it's hard <laughs> well it's uh and you were you had mentioned earlier too that you guys that you do your own coloring on, on a lot of the work that you have and i think that uh, i mean i assume it's be, just because you want to when you're when you're working on the pieces you know how you want them colored and so you you know how you want these pieces to be finally presented so uh i think that's that's pretty pretty again a unique approach for somebody who wants to have that kind of control over it but it's but uh, you know when you look at how you color things the the mm -hmm. uh the the tones that you use and the you know in in the pieces just are complement 
the black and white work that you're doing as well. So it's just the perfect blend. And I mean, it'd be hard to see somebody else kind of stepping in and really getting getting the vibe, you know, the approach that you want to get. Uh, because, uh, you know, again, I think you really have a, a, full, a fully re um, realized vision of what you want with the final page. So it's, it's yeah. yeah, really amazing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, just uh, when I draw, I try to uh, uh, thinking about the final version in color. So mm -hmm. I, I can doing, uh, uh, I, I try, I try every, every time to, to doing a good balance about inks and color and because i color myself it's easy for for this reason but mm -hmm. uh, it's an hard work uh because i start to color myself from uh, my boom studio series we only find them when they're dead uh i do a lot of pages a lot of pages and this is the reason that uh, right now in dc i try to color myself because i'm thinking in color when i draw and yeah uh, just try to improve and I also think, you know, something that Simone does that's a little bit differently, not only with the technique of the actual physical art of the way that the ink goes down on the page, but is his page design and page layouts. Um, it's not the traditional boom, boom, boom panels. Um, he really looks at it from a storytelling standpoint on every single page. Um, just the layouts in general, when you go through and you look, you don't see too many double page splashes that are that are laid out like that with panels on top of panels broken up. Um, so it's just a fresh take on on a lot of things. And uh, I know Simone works with a great writer and they have a lot of collaboration. So when he starts, he has a vision in the beginning of where he wants to go. And uh, he's already thinking color, as he said. So when he's laying all this down, he knows how the shading is going to look and how the colors are going to transition. So um, with Simone, uh, something that's very cool to watch in his process is there's a lot of prep work. There's a lot of thinking and a lot of uh, background work done. Um, you know, even on commissions for big pieces that he does, he wants to read the book. He wants to understand what he's drawing and what things are significant to that character to incorporate them into the piece that he's doing. Um, so he really puts a lot of time and effort uh, into the the background, the layout, and then the execution comes almost last. So it's it's a really cool process to watch happen, and it just leaves you know beautiful artwork at the end. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, guys. Thanks for the all the these all these. Uh, good words thank you yeah well deserved when 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 jason who is a uh a, you know he is a a straight up marvel collector from uh beginning to end and he's even saying it's gorgeous when he's looking at batman art that says something because uh he doesn't cross he doesn't cross uh publishers too often i don't believe <laughs> Jason, I'm with you, bro. This is this is a big step for me. <laughs> I'm gonna end up I'm gonna end up owning my first Batman page by the end of the year, I think, and that's you know something I never thought would happen. So, I really hope, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, this is great, and you know, and, and again, I, I didn't say congratulations to both of you for you know earlier when you were talking about the Tulio, but yeah. I think it's fantastic that uh, you know I think I think that the. the the more people we have, uh, you know, in this, uh, in our hobby, and I, it's hard to call it a hobby. I don't, every time, I, I, every time I say the word hobby to Kazra, he frowns at me because he wants us to come <laughs> up with a better word for what this is that we do. I mean, it is a business at the end of the day. But as a, yes, but as collectors, it's hard to really look at it as something different. I mean, we're all working in a in a medium that, uh, you know, just is something that we grew up on, and the idea that it's uh, anything but a hobby or, or just something that we, you know it's so enjoyable it's hard to kind of put it into that uh sphere of being a business but i i think it's great that you know the that the the approach you guys are taking to the collective uh, you know i i think the idea of uh you know a, a team you know working together is something that uh you know we, we've seen here or there in the past but i think it's you know i think you guys gotta can have a great spin on it and it's clear that you have a camaraderie that uh, you know is going to fuel you know the next several years of you both working together and i think that that's what's that's what's fun that we as collectors enjoy seeing uh, th those kind of relationships get uh built between uh you know a artist and their their agent or representative however you want to look at it so uh so i'm excited to see see where this goes thank you i i appreciate that bill and yeah it's an thank honor you. to it's an honor to work with simone and uh you know it's for me it's i got to be passionate about what i'm selling or uh you know enjoy what I'm selling and, uh, you know, watching him create from the first time I watched him, he did a commission for me. Uh, and then I got to see him work in person. Um, 
but I knew I was like, yeah, this is, this is just too good to be true. This guy's amazing. So it ended up working out very well and I'm super thankful. Yeah. I like, I see, you know, Marcus said obsession, Black Viper, Adorn said mania. Uh, number one Marvel fan said it's a lifestyle. <laughs> see, <laughs> Or an, yeah, an addiction. I get it. There's so yeah, many things to look at it. Hobby just doesn't sound right either, but it is the way I always look at it. Again, you know, coming from a, the collector perspective, it's it's tough not to think of it as anything else. But uh, again, the, the ecosystem of our of our of whatever this is is uh, is very diverse and and fun. And I mean, and it's part of the, but it's part of the. It's part of the things that I think we enjoy, enjoy a lot of, out of it. I mean, you know, when I started 20 years ago, there weren't as many reps and people who were assisting the artists, you know, get get their work out there and present things differently. And now and now it's become a kind of a part of part of the let's see. Now I'm going to say the word business, but but, I, you know, I enjoy it. And I think, you know, Matt, you know, we've obviously gotten to know one another a lot over the last year. Yeah. And I, I think that, uh, you know, you're really well suited for this. I mean, you have a business background anyway, and then you're coming into doing this, uh, you know, some somewhere down the road, it'll probably be full time for you. So I, I just I think it's great. You know, it's always good to see somebody that you're, you 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 appreciate as a friend. You know, do something like this. So uh, you know, congratulations on that uh, immensely. And I should I didn't show the logo. You had that. Uh, oh yeah. Simone put together here. Let me see where was that uh, right here. So we're gonna see be seeing this yeah. Uh, yeah. often. I I imagine. Yeah. So that's the cybernetic samurai. Um, I'm going to have two logos, one by each Simone. And uh, I just love this one. <laughs> actually able to, to draw this live in front of me. Uh, it was really cool to watch take place. And uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm from Buffalo. So we were able to incorporate. Uh, Simone had the idea of putting the uh, Buffalo head right on the, the face of his armor because of a massive Bills fan, for better or for worse. So a little <laughs> bit of a homage to uh, something that I'm very passionate about. So I, was, I greatly appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I wanted to address something that I saw in the chat and, uh, Bill, thank you so much for the kind words. Yeah. You know, it, hopefully one day it is, uh, my family's had a business for a very long time and I've learned a lot, you know, from my father and what he's taught me about business and uh, I'm able to now apply it to my, uh, passion. And, um, you know, I've seen a lot of people who, who are you adding next or whatever it is, uh, literally, unless something extraordinary fell into my lap, um, my view on this is I want to make sure that, you know, every single artist that I bring in feels like they're getting every single thing that they need from me. And I feel like sometimes something gets lost, um, you know, with these 50, 60 people teams. Uh, and it's not about the business aspect of it because great art gets sold at any point. Um, it's really about having that connection with the collector, with the artist and, and building a relationship of somebody that wants to come back, that wants to be a uh, forever collector. You know, somebody like a Carl who's in the chat tonight who just, you know, fell in love with his work and then was able to meet Simone and, and really enjoy him. Um, you know, because those are the experiences that I cherish most. The art's beautiful, but I remember the moments, you know, really more than anything. And if I can help create those moments, even with a few handful of people, um, that's really my goal. So, you know, next step is to make sure that for 2024, everything that Simone Demio needs, uh, his needs are met. Uh, he feels comfortable. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll we'll go forward in some somewhere down the road. But for right now, uh, the two Simones will keep me very, very busy. I can I can promise you that. <laughs> I believe that. And and you almost had a friend in the chat in Jason, but after he learned you were a, a Bills fan, yeah, you're you're not uh and I and I saw a ring or two, but the thing is, guys, listen, you guys have all been there. You've won just let us get our shine here. We're struggling as is, you know. It is listen, we we've got two things in Buffalo. We've got the chicken wing and we've got football. Just let us have them. Just let us have them. That's all we do. And Sean McDermott for life. I've been preaching to fire this guy since two seasons ago. We got my Quick story, Ringo. My brother's son plays basketball with his son, Sean McDermott. I don't go to the games because if I see him in real life, I'm going to walk up to him and be like, what are you doing? Because I can't help myself, so I don't go to the games. I can't do it. It's too much. It's too much. Yeah, I get it. I definitely get it. And there was a nice comment in here from Ollie. He said, I got my first original Batman uh, cover from Simone and fell in love with his work. I usually wow. collect Marvel work only, oh, so you. I got my first DC. Thanks to Simone. That's, thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. It's amazing. It's amazing. So yeah, and, and the logo was an amazing thing. I wanted to go with the samurai logo because once again, I love anime, Japanese style things. And, uh, you know, you can't just go plaster in Spider-Man on your website until eventually, you know, somebody comes to knock in. So, uh, you know, I wanted to have something cool and both Simone's did an amazing job at what they've, uh, at what they've created. And it was great to watch him do it in front of me. So I, it was a very, very special moment. And, uh, you know, 
you'll be seeing the logo a lot in the future, hopefully. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, uh, so why don't we talk a bit about the art sales we're going to do today? We've got, uh, I think, 10 lots that we're going to look at. And you guys are doing something special for the show this week by uh, you know, pricing them at a, so, at a level where you want uh, you want to make sure we get some pieces out into the market. Yep. So, you know, when Simone and I got together, I said, listen, you know, uh, one thing that Simone and I both like is we like hype things. We like to enjoy, um, you know, the, the feeling of getting a great deal or landing a pair of shoes that you're trying to get or, you know, whatever it is. So uh, when we talked, we wanted to do kind of like a launch special pricing and it happened to work out really great that calf live was happening at the same time um so guys what we wanted to create for you guys uh under the new representation for me and simone trying to get some new collectors out here and seeing his work for the uh you know the calf youtuber faithfuls uh we're going to be offering about 20 to 30 percent off of list pricing uh for the weekend so for saturday and sunday uh, we we're offering until sunday because we need to be aware of the italian collectors that love simone's work that you know right now it's 12 30. uh might not, <laughs> it, might not be able to make it into the chat uh we don't want to uh you know alienate anybody by any means so um you know, we're going to be offering these at great deals. These are the lowest prices that you'll see uh, for Simone's work uh, this year and next year. I can personally promise you that. Um, but we wanted to make a splash and make sure that everybody had a chance to uh, see some great pieces at some great prices. Uh, payment plans are available. Uh, if you claim it, we'll work out a payment plan in an email. Um, we'll keep it reasonable, you know, three to four months uh, before, you know, if we can keep it within that. That would be great. Um, but we just wanted to try to show some really nice pieces. Uh, some of the stuff, you know, has been for sale before, but is at a much discounted price. And some of it is absolutely brand new to the market, never been for sale before. Um, so when we get to the, some of the stuff that's never been out before, I'll, I'll give you a little uh, a spiel on it. But we wanted to make sure that we brought you guys some quality artwork at some really great prices for, uh, for Calf Life. Yeah. And uh, as far as, I mean, we're going to be doing claims in the chat for the 10 lots that we have here. And uh, you never know, Dylan, because you might learn some stuff before the end of the show. But for the 10 lots, as far as uh, you want to let everybody know what uh, how you handle shipping, how you handle taking payments, I mean, what your preferred yep. methods are, those sorts of so things. So payments, uh, PayPal works fine for us. Um, you know, depending on, uh, Simone is in Tokyo right now and he does have a few pieces with him for some showcases. So mm -hmm. depending on where the artwork is, um, you know, give us, you know, a little bit of time to, uh, figure out the logistics for shipping. Uh, but if the ship, if the shipment gets to me, one of the things that's beautiful that I like to set aside from the Tulio Art Collective from everybody else is believe it or not, I ship for free. So what? Uh, yeah, everybody else. Free the thinks, shipping. Oh my yeah, gosh. everybody else thinks it's you know the taboo. It, to me, it's a part of doing business. It's something I've learned in the past. Um, I just feel like it's the right thing to do. People are spending a lot of money in some cases, and for me to charge you, you know, if you're going to spend four or five grand, and for me to charge you fifty dollars is absolutely insane. Uh, everybody else has a different business model, but for me, that's wild. So I want to make sure that we offer, you know, it'll be nice package, well done, and free shipping. So um, let me just see, you know, depending on case by case where the art is, uh, we'll do what we can and we'll make it happen. Free portfolios? No, I, I can't. Eat free I don't have free portfolio. I can only do one free, and I chose shipping. Uh, but well, that, I do so have to say, I mean, who doesn't love a free? I mean, who doesn't love a free portfolio? I've got them all over the place. Uh, yeah, same uh, here. So they they are everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> It's worked for Anthony. That's how he's gotten his uh, his brand out there in, in more ways than one. I mean, it, it works for him. Uh, Dylan wanted to know international as well. So that's uh, international. I'll split it with you. Okay, we'll work it out. No problem. There you go. So uh, yeah, free Buffalo Bills tickets. I, I've seen you selling tickets on Facebook every well, now. Well, I've been a little too busy to get to the games because I've been working on some things. You know, <laughs> maybe launching the Chile Wire Collective and Simone de Mio. So, um, you know, uh, but I, we do have a game uh, Monday night, which I will be attending. So that'll be great. Fantastic. So, uh, so yeah. So we're going to show ten lots here uh, today, and yep. they'll, they're numbered one to ten. So you're just going to claim them in the chat. Just claim in the lot number. And uh, for those of people who are watching after the show, if you see stuff that hasn't been claimed, you know, I might as well just, yeah, I didn't highlight this yet, but uh, Matt's email is detulioartcollective at gmail.com. So while you're going to claim 
the artwork in the chat after the show, we would want you to email Matt at the Tulio Art Collective at gmail.com and uh, you know let him know which lots you picked up. And also, it's always good when you do that, give him your mailing address. And, and, and if you can tell him your payment options, that's always good too. Get it all out there at the front. It'll make Matt's job easier to follow up with you. So uh, yeah, yeah. See, I've learned a few things, but we don't do free shipping uh, over here at Cap HQ. I, I hate to say it. It's okay. It's no problem. <laughs> but but you know, I may I may take a you know take notice of how uh, how things go for you, and maybe I'll have to you know, maybe I, change a few things. I think I think Cox does a lot of other great things. So free shipping isn't you know something that needs to be at the priority list. You got a lot of other stuff that you do for us. That's uh, really that's really great. So. Well, I, I appreciate that. And Carl says, uh, what, Matt wins uh, the longest rep email award for sure. Yeah, he's, <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to, you don't want to mi mix up a uh, vowel or consonant in there at all. But nope. uh, yeah, if it bounces back to you, you know, to send it again, but we'll have everybody. D DAC at gmail.com was taken. So that was, I, this is what I had to go with. <laughs> Somebody oh, like Daniel, Daniel Allen Craig had had his email a long time before me so i was i got you know locked out now yeah uh black viper adorn asks does the art go through you uh first as in no customs for us buyers or how does that work yeah so what we'll do is the, there will be some bulk shipments that are sent to me they get right mm -hmm. to the united states and then they come domestically so no customs that's something okay. that i uh, worked out very well with simone bianchi i learned you know from my past experiences and it's definitely best for as many packages to be worked domestically as possible. So I try to take care of that for all the collectors. Got it. Uh, all right, well, why don't we jump into the art sale side of things? We've yeah. got uh, 10 lots to look at. We've already covered how we're gonna handle all the shipping and things. So uh, I don't think we really have a, there's no order high to low or anything to this. I kind of followed uh, Matt's outline. And so we'll just dive right into it. First lot is the cover to black Adam 12. So, you know, I assume 11 by 17 on all these. I think that was one thing that wasn't in the uh, in the sure. outline for me. But yeah, 11 by 17. So this is priced $2,000. I've also got a uh, slide here that also shows the, the uh, piece in color. And uh, it's, you know, talk, going back to talking about the, the you know, the, the color palette, I think, you know, it works so well with your with your style. I mean, I, I love it. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Really try to, to do my best to the color version and create the the light bulb logo on the table in front of the character yeah so fun see there's even things like that that get lost um you know but he sees in the beginning so he's got the lightning bolt with off the reflection of the window yeah. on the table um i love that he's got what looks like an xbox or a playstation controller yeah. you know on the on the table um and Simone, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, this guy is like the, he's like the second Black Adam, correct? He's like the young one. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. He's like the Miles yeah. Morales Black Adam. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I'm, 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 every time I'm doing some cover or commission, hey, I, 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 I try to, I try to read something about the, the character, read something about uh, the situation. And try to put some details about uh, the life of the character, the past of the character. Uh, in this way, I try to explain that the character uh, studying uh, it's a medical, and uh, he play a, a PlayStation and have some passions. Yeah, try to explain the story of the character in an image, and it's hard to do sometimes. Uh, uh, I, I need more time to to uh, to study the situation and read some comic book about the character, but I love to do uh, something like that. Well, this is and, uh, uh, this is yeah, a this, uh, this is a recreation about the the first uh, one of the one of the most famous uh, uh, Black Adam cover with uh, uh, the cats and other things in the same pose uh but because it's a new character and yeah well everybody were, was pointing out the cats and how that kind of helps center everything really well i mean it's a uh, it's, it's 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 fantastic i love i love it and again it's uh it's just hard to imagine that this is all done traditionally but man mm -hmm. yeah. uh yeah, so if, if, you, if you want i can show you uh oh, you have it you? Uh, right oh, yeah. now yeah yeah sure Yeah, it's, I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah, this is the sponge. Uh, this is Copic. Yeah. 
Now, do you uh, have you uh, shown off the sponge technique on Instagram so that uh, you've given it yeah. all the, the uh, tricks and tools away? Uh, well, that's nothing wrong with that. It's good. It's always good to share. So uh, let's, take, let's take a look at the second lot here. This is uh, uh, this one's priced two thousand dollars, and again, it just blows my mind when I look at the uh, the art here. It's just uh, it's it's so amazing. I would like to see Thank these you. in person. I'm jealous. I was, I was gonna say because until you see it, his artwork in person, it's really hard to understand the level of gradient and shading that goes into each one of these. I mean, this one is really impressive. I mean, to be able to have this glass shattering in the back, the shadow behind him, um, and not have it get lost in traditional to not just look like a shattered mess. Uh, mm -hmm. it's just really, a, it's, it, it's a testament to, uh, you know, how big of a professional Simone is because this piece, once again, I'm not a DC collector. Um, if this one makes it through the weekend, th this one, I am not a big Shazam guy, but it's just so beautiful. I, th this piece is, I think one of the, one of the best ones we have tonight for the value. It's just absolutely stunning. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And uh, what did Alberto just say? I wish I will admit I never uh, heard of Sony before since I don't follow DC. But wow, this is some great stuff. Exactly. Thank I mean, you. That's, Thank you. That's so why uh, you know we've we've been doing the comic art live stuff for a while too. I, you know, I've been exposed to a lot of new artists that I might not have had the opportunity to get to meet either. So uh, no, nope, I totally get it, Alberto. Let's see. I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything in the chat. Uh, yeah, <laughs> lots of good stuff. But this is this is this is a great piece. So this is lot two, priced to two thousand dollars. Then let's see, I've got lot three queued up over here as well. Dawn of DC cover. I thought this one was really fun with all the uh, the, the 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 images that you've used on the screen to spell out DC mm -hmm. and uh, the you know the classic character uh, poses for many of those characters. So this this one's priced yep. at one thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. And I've got the uh, color version of that as well, right there. But uh, but yeah, these are fun. And I mean, even the you know the the perspective you put on this one, you know, being being as if I'm looking up at everybody, it just makes yep. this thing all the more impactful. Yeah. Yeah, Simone, uh, when you did this one, did you have an idea of where you were going to put each character in the back, or did you play around yeah. with that a little? No, 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 absolutely. Yeah, I have a, a, from my editor a list of characters to put uh, in the screen because mm -hmm. all this character, all this character is part of Down of DC. Uh, yeah, and try to 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 find a solution to uh, to doing something special because uh, just the editor asked me to put um, the character in the screen, but I try to create something special with the the Down of DC right and try to. Uh, uh, to do a good composition with the characters. It's hard to do, but so fun. Uh, no, Carl, this one is in Italy currently, um, but uh, I've never seen this one in person as well. I did see somebody uh, make a comment and I thought of it the first time that when I saw this, it reminded me of like a Street Fighter uh, selection screen of like a video game you know what i mean with all the characters on and somebody just said that so i'm glad i'm not the not the only one but it's a lot of uh key characters i mean mandalore peacemaker and then you know pretty much every key dc character is uh is built in back there so um we just thought this piece you know it has great perspective has a lot of great characters on it we wanted to put it out you know at a uh, at a great value and um you know we hope everybody enjoys getting to see it can we uncrop the art? Uh, the <laughs> right side is uncropped. <laughs> yes, and uh, yeah. After we're done showing these off, I can I can actually show the regular scan that I've got. We can zoom in on it a little bit. Um, but yeah, so this is lot three. Now I think we're moving into some interior work here next. So lot four. Yeah. From, uh, yeah. Now this is the first traditional page from Batman and Robin number three, page two. You got this yeah. one priced at one thousand dollars, and we were just looking at this image. Correct. So guys, this is very important here. I want to take a moment to bring up that right now on CAF Live for this weekend, this is the first time that any interiors are being sold individually from Batman and Robin. The first two issues sold complete. So this is the first time that a collector will have a chance to have any of Simone DeMio's interior work from Batman and Robin. And this is uh, a beautiful page, you know, more of a 
I would say half splash or, you know, I don't know, however you would characterize this one, uh, but a Batman Robin Joker statue in the background um, and had an amazing pre- Carl. Thank you very much. This page is oh, absolutely, thank stunning. You, Carl. absolutely stunning. Um, really, really beautiful piece. And uh, first time that these have kind of been out in the wild. Um, so thank you, Carl. But uh, I just, to me, the one that got this was the Joker statue in the background. It looks so ominous. Um, you know, Bruce holding the, the, what is that called? The Robin Rang? I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a the Robin Hook. I'm not a big DC guy, but I just love the artwork. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it's fantastic. And thank you so much, Carl. For, uh, Thank you, for you know, this, uh, this, this is definitely a really, really beautiful piece, and you, and you get the dinosaur in the background. I mean, come on, this is uh, yeah. this is such a great image. So, and, uh, who's in the back? Did you draw? Who is in the back in like the chambers? Do, do you have? Is are those actual characters, or is that just like silhouettes? No, no, just silhouettes. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes you hide some Easter eggs in there. I didn't know if that was like somebody <laughs> important. No, yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's take a look at lot five next. So this is a, a DPS, and we did show this one earlier when we were talking about uh, the techniques on the uh, with the sponges. So lot five. This yeah. is uh, pages four and five on from the same book, and it's priced at two thousand dollars. And again, the composition on this thing is fantastic. You know, the, definitely the you know the we've layered the panels in there. You know, I, I think that that just adds to the you know dynamic kind of flow of this this image and just with the two characters the way we've got them positioned in the on this dps is just it's brilliant it's really a great image i don't know who got it on the back end bill but to me it looks like dylan i'm not sure who yeah i was i know we got a lot of claims pop in yeah. and, <laughs> and it, is, uh, it is dylan we usually what we have to do when we have a lot of interest and you see a lot of claims come in i have to wait because sometimes they'll get re-nested as they come in but uh dylan's uh claim came in ahead of carl and uh yeah and this I is agree. this page is just these two pages are just unbelievable Thank you. uh just Thank you. i mean amazing simone why don't you tell us a little bit about so who uh white rabbit robin batman yeah. um why don't you break yeah. down a lot of a lot bit. of characters and you can show you can see uh white robin my new design of white rabbit and a shush uh in the in the small panel to the right uh my 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 new design for shush this is a uh, a new villain and uh, the terrible trio you you can you can find in the in these double pages all the enemies together uh fight uh in this book uh yeah try to do my best to have a, a epic uh, moment of batman robin with the other panels of the enemies so so fun great great claim dylan and remy i completely agree thank you um you know damien is like the newer robin but i love the way simone draws damien um, he looks absolutely. I, I love Damien. Awesome. I love Damien. Awesome. One of my favorite Robin ever. Yeah. Quick shout out to my mom in the chat up at eight o'clock at night. Thanks for tuning in, mom. Appreciate that. <laughs> it's always good when mom tunes in. Too. Right. Was, yes. Uh, all right. Well, let's take a look at lot six here. And uh, this is from the same issue, Batman and Robin three. Yeah. This is page six, priced at seven fifty. We looked at this image earlier as well, and again, just the you know panel structure on this thing is fantastic. And again, yeah. the, just your technique on this page is just it just blows my mind. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful yeah. piece Thank of you. art. The, the last panel is one of my favorite to do because uh, you can find uh, Batman versus uh, Shash uh, in the same panel, and so happy. Oh. <laughs> Carl yeah. just beat out Carl. Wow, <laughs> great back Thank head. you, Carl. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, this one, I mean, Shush, you, Shush's design to me is very cool. Uh, but the the movement you can see to me in this piece with the gun firing and the bullet casings going, and then Batman, you know, covering up to to block and throw. I mean, the just the whole layout of the of the page on this one is just extremely extremely cool to me. And then the close up, as Simone said, you know, right at the end, I knew it was one of his favorites to uh, one of his favorites to do from this issue. Well, understandably so. And uh, yeah, sorry, Bat Kid, you were milliseconds behind Carl on that one. <laughs> so, all right, let's go ahead and we're going to switch over to lot seven next. This is the cover to Batman and Robin number five, and this is priced at five thousand dollars. Crazy to do. Crazy this this, this piece is wild. It's wild. Somebody talk crazy about it. To do. This piece yeah, is crazy. It's, yeah, 
uh, yeah, it's like uh, my editor uh, Ben asked me about uh, a scholastic one and try to do to put all all the things that I think like uh, the the relationship about father and son and the rest and the Batman Robin relationship uh the the villain the enemy try to destroy the family try to do something something hard to uh inside uh i, I don't remember the english name of the uh the scholastic uh, locker, locker. Uh, yeah yeah locker yeah sorry guys yeah. try to no, improve my english but yeah you're, you're perfect uh, yeah it's a crazy perspective from the locker it's it's so fun to do but so hard to yeah <laughs> Oh, well, uh, let's see. Modok said it was a mistake claim, but we've got oh. Ollie then who claimed it. So. Thank you. No problem. Ollie. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you, Ollie. The backup Thank claim you so much. Well to me, the silhouettes behind them, you know, to get to see Bruce and Damien kind of in their street clothes, maybe like uh, take your parents to school day or whatever it was, or take, you know, uh, period teacher day, whatever it was. Uh, the silhouettes behind them with their costume. But hey, Simone, what's Robin got on his feet is the more important thing. Yeah. He is, is the Jordan 4. Uh, the Jordan Four. Come on now. I mean, if yeah. Robin's gonna I'm a go, sneaker, to, I'm a sneakerhead. I'm a sneakerhead. Sorry, guys. If, <laughs> Sorry, if guys. Robin's gonna go to Gotham uh, Central High School, then he better be wearing <laughs> the coolest sneakers, and uh, you know he's got them on. So I love that piece. Little homage to the Jordan Fours there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, That's guys. Fantastic. Well, congrats, so, Ollie, on picking this one up. It is an amazing, amazing piece. Yeah, great claim because this one is this one is stunning. I mean, it's really beautiful. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at lot number eight. Now, this is the cover to Brave and the Bold number six. This one's priced yeah. at $4,500, and we we get a cat in this one, too. But look at, I mean, yeah. this is uh, this crazy, is so spectacular. I mean, the depth in this thing, it's beautiful, man. Yeah, I, I, it's it's a new version of uh, the Batcave uh, on the top of some uh, skyscraper because in the story, Batman lost the, uh, this is a, um, uh, the brave and the bold, the brave and the bold story, and lost the 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 Batcave and try to uh, to do another one. And in the story, is, we we can find some uh, situation from Batman Year One, and they try to to side with the cat and the pearl. Uh, so yeah, I, I love cats. Yeah, I I, I try I, I love to 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 insert some animals in the in the in the covers and the pages because. Uh, I think to to have some uh, movement and uh, some good element to do a good composition, yeah. Uh, try to do something different. Yeah, yeah I, I love the Italian way of the Batman. I was just about to say this is the Italian Batman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the the whole perspective of the up close of Batman. Not only do you get an amazing shot of Bruce with the cowl on. Uh, you get the cat with the pearls, uh, but like Bill said, the whole perspective of him being up on the building and the whole cityscape behind him, um, you know, Bill, if you could go back to the full size of the original art, um, you know, not the car, I mean, look at the amount of bats coming forward and every yeah. single one of those is done by this man's hand. It's like crazy. It, it's, this cover is so good. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it is beautiful. So uh, this one is still available. I see there's, People tempted in there, but we do have two more pieces to look at as well. But this one's priced at forty-five hundred dollars, lot number eight. So we'll go ahead and take a look at lot. Lewis, nine. feel free, man. We'll, we'll work it out. Oh, Simone, talk about this one. This oh, one, yeah, was a yeah, crazy, yeah, the, uh, yeah. Uh, this is an, one one of my favorite from Batman: the Brave and the Bold. Try to uh, to tell a story from Joker and Batman, and uh, it, it's. Uh, j just try to do a good Bruce, uh, thank you. perspective. Uh, thank you, Bruce. Yeah, thank you so much. And and if you see uh, some letters uh, on the tree, is uh, Tom King and me, Gerald, because the story is from uh, this team, and try to <laughs> try to do some uh, good thing uh, and tell a story. Uh, yeah, just because I love. The, the relationship ab about Batman and Joker and uh, try to do something different. Yeah. Yes, this. Well, indeed you did. And and I hate Thank to you. be a tease to everybody, but I said 10 lots. There's only nine. So this is the last piece that we've got here to show off. And uh, yeah, you know, the, a lot of times when we look at, uh, the, you know, the colored versions of uh, published work, we, we kind of cringe, you know, because uh, typically, you know, it just doesn't have the same weight. We love, we love seeing mm -hmm. the, 
uh, the, the black and white originals, but uh, the color work that you put into these is just fantastic. It really complements the work so much that, I mean, it's it's as good. I mean, you want to see both pieces. I mean, I it, it, I could see somebody, you know, literally, you know, putting a uh, colored version next to the, the final version because they're both works of art at the end of the day. I mean, so much so that it's almost criminal not to see both images together. Yeah, I thought it was very important with, you know, Simone coloring his own work uh, for to be yeah. able to see the, the published uh, cover with his colors versus the traditional. Uh, <laughs> Grant and Alberto want to claim that. <laughs> we don't even have Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, uh, yeah. But, you know, I think that it's super important with that because, um, as he said earlier, he starts off from the beginning knowing what the colored version is going to look like. Mm -hmm. So with him having the, you know, the ability to have that vision from the beginning. You know, if you mm -hmm. uh, just real quick, if you could bring back up the last lot um, that was yeah. playing, um, you know, the, uh, the, the colored version, if you could, I mean, Great. just with the sheer amount of things that are going on here with the knives, uh, you know, the throwing stars, the symbol wrapped around uh, the knife, the Batman symbol, the Joker symbol wrapped around the one, the J on the back. But to me, what really gets it is the hints of green at the top in the Joker's hair, right up by his tongue, like looking up of his nose, mm -hmm. the pink on his fingers uh, on the reflection of the knife. Um, because this could be a piece in credit to Simone that could get jumbled up very easily. You could lose a lot here. And with the way he colored this from traditional, you see everything as you're supposed to see it. So it's it's really just same thing with with lot eight with the uh with the Brave and the Bold cover uh six. You know, from everything in the back, there's a punching bag, there's a weightlifting bench, there's and he has a vision for all that the whole way. So uh you know it's it's very uh cool to see it from the traditional version all the way up to the uh the published cover version from him start to finish. Man, yeah, no, it's uh it's and beautiful. Guys, thank you, thank you for all the guys uh offer for these pieces. I'm so happy. Thank you so thank you so much. Well, what we'll do is I'll go Andrew ahead. G. Looks like I got here too late. Claim one through nine. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's remind everybody because five of the nine lots did sell. So I'll just show you the four lots that didn't because, like you said, we know we're going to lot of, have a lot of people watching the show tomorrow or you know within the next twenty four hours. So yeah. these prices will still be valid for the next twenty four hours. And uh, if you're watching after the fact, I might as well get your email address up there. You know, again, so everybody knows who to email the Tulio Art Collective at gmail .com. So if you're watching after the show and you saw a piece that didn't sell, you're more than welcome to email Matt at that address and, and ask if it's still available. He'll let you know and take care of you. Yep. So, and I just want to uh, and I just want to remind everybody that the pricing that you see today is only reflective until Sunday at midnight. Mm -hmm. After that, uh, we're going to go back to the you know our regular regular pricing. But we really wanted to give everybody the best p chance possible for our, kind of our kickoff for us working together and for CAF Live. Uh, but Bill, yeah, run through those real quick and then we'll we'll get to uh, the last part here. Yep. Here, let me hide your um, email address for a second. So uh, we've got lot number one. That was the cover to Black Adam 12, priced at $2,000. And I can show the color version of that one as well. So you can get that reminder. And then we also have lot number two. That was uh, the Lazarus Planet Revenge of the Gods. Number three cover, priced at $2,000 as well. And uh, the color version right there. And then we have the uh, Dawn of DC cover. This is lot number three priced at $1,750 and the color version of that one as well. And lastly, we had lot number eight. That was that uh, cover to Brave and the Bold number six priced at $4,500. And I got the color version there as well. And just like Matt just said, these uh, prices are only in effect until midnight Eastern Standard Time on Sunday. After that, they will all go up to what they uh, wanted them to be. This was something special done just for Comic Art Live and Again, you know, Simone, Matt, I sincerely appreciate you doing that. I mean, it's a, I know this is a kickoff for your new new business as well and getting the word out yeah. there. But, you know, I, I appreciate you guys doing something like this for the show because, you know, it brings in a new audience and also just gets more art into collectors' hands, which is really why we're all here, right? We're trying to, I mean, we enjoy the hobby and we want others to enjoy it as well. Alberto, so, thank you. Oh, we, yeah. we, we and, and you get it shipped for free, Alberto, package deal. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Alberto. Right. Thank you so much. Alberto, you know, you're converting a Captain America collector. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> <laughs>
Alberto is the number one Captain America collector in our audience. Well, and maybe the world. Amazing. I was going to say he has an amazing well, collection for sure. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Alberto. So that means that right now, uh, lots two and eight are the only two available. So, uh, you know, we're kind of coming towards the end of the panel. But one thing that we wanted to let everybody know is that uh, the other the surprise announcement is Simone is coming to OAX. And uh, yes, we yeah. are incredibly honored to have you coming out, Simone. I mean, it, it really, so uh, I couldn't have, uh, you know, worked this out any better than I would than I did when, you know, we we're talking to Matt about the possibility and that, you know, that you wanted to come out as well. Uh, it, you know, it, I, I, we had to make it happen. And I'm so glad that you're able <laughs> yeah. to come out. Yeah. You know, to I'm get so it. happy, guys. So happy. So happy, really, to see, to see your, your in person uh, and to meet a lot of amazing collector from the US. I'm so, so happy. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, and, and you know, Matt's, uh, you know, as we know, Simone Bianchi is going to be there as well. So this is just going to be yeah. an, an incredible opportunity for people who have, have maybe, you know, clearly not met the both of you in person to do that. And, uh, you know, for me, it, it truly, it's going to be a thrill just to see some of your work in person. I, I can't wait. And I think anybody else who's already going to OAX is uh, going to be very happy. And uh, uh, I saw uh, Mr. Rivera was asking you if you were coming. Now he's he's happily going to see you at OAX. I know uh, Carl's going to OAX. I mean, there's a lot of people in the chat that are going to OAX. Uh, even Jason is going to OAX. He's got he's setting he's setting up and selling there as well. But um, as part of going to OAX, we do actually have a pre-con opportunity for everyone. Um, I guess in total six, I believe, because we right. have uh, we have limits on things. We basically have four tiers of uh, pre-con opportunities. Now, these are not going to be claimed in the chat. These will be done via email. So I would encourage. Well, well Bill, I mean, if somebody wants to claim one in the chat tonight and they're here, yeah. I got it. You, you, you want to do it that way? Sure. Let's 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 keep it going. <laughs> uh okay you know it's uh that's fine by me if we handle them in the chat that's uh that's fine but i, I want to make sure everybody remembers the email address get that back up there because you will end up emailing matt Correct. on this it's uh uh okay <laughs> see you threw me a curveball matt i mean let's see. i mean I, I see a lot of people asking and if they want what they want them now and you know we'll go through them quickly we don't have to take up too much time if nobody uh claims them then just send me an email we'll go from there Okay, that's cool. Uh, one quick question, I mean, so I don't miss it. Uh, Abby was asking if there's going to be more of uh, Simone's art dropping uh, during Comic Art Live, uh, like there at a booth. Or anything. So what? So what you see here so, is all that is available. Anything that is left from this show tonight will go on my Comic Art Fans uh, page tomorrow at the same price you see, and then it will be coming back and uh, be available for OAX. If I it makes it. <laughs> if it makes it. Right. Right. Well, I'm just saying that I think we're going to get a lot of claims in the chat for uh, for these things. It, it, it may be better to do it via email, but I, I'm, okay, I'm, hey. willing, I'm willing to be game <laughs> if you want to be game. But uh, I just think it's better because this way you have the email addresses in hand and the order that they come in and it will be, well, okay. I can see why no. we should do it in the chat too. I mean, I, everybody is here. So, you know. Everybody's uh, here. There's 82 and, people watching and, and, right yeah. now. And this is the this is the perks of staying on until the end of the stream and having a you know a first chance and being a faithful calf you know calf watcher. So let's let's see exactly. It. So what we'll do is uh, like I said, there's four tiers. I'll pull up the first slide and uh, you know they're they're basically so they're going to be numbered one through four. You got to mm -hmm. you know, say claim one, uh, which is what the first one will be. This first one has uh, three slots to fill. So this is lot mm -hmm. or claim number one, if you will. Uh, this is a nine by 12 torso priced at five hundred dollars limited to three spots i did have the email you but of course we won't but there's another example of what these uh, yes. 9 by 12 torso these are like. these are for attendees only to be picked up at oax absolutely i should have mentioned that as well but thank you matt for uh clarifying that so uh we've got uh what we got uh claims by uh gosh see it when it when it goes by fast it's i don't want to miss anything but uh we have comic well, sam well i i don't need his email <laughs> <laughs> bad kid voodoo and uh anthony t if i'm not mistaken there we go that's our that is our three oh, and uh lewis came you. in a little late but uh, we do have three other uh levels in the uh, pre-con commission opportunities here 
And uh, hey guys, remember, if you claim, please send me an email as soon as the as soon as the panel ends, just so right. I have your, your immediate you know your address. Highlighting it one more time to Tulio Art Collective at uh, gmail.com. So the uh, tier two, which there is only one available. This is a A3 convention quality piece, uh, priced at $1,500, again, limited to only one. And um, again, yeah. this is a, a, you, you call this one convention quality. I know that the, the next one's labeled a little different, but how do you want to define convention quality? Uh, well, uh, I'm not sure if Oranga got it. I see it on my screen, but Simone, um, you know, these are called convention quality for the sole reason that his, just his next level is cover quality. And this just has less background, less detail. Um, you know, yeah. obviously, but still has a ton of detail. But compared to what you see, on yeah. the next, it's something that you know that can be done at the convention. But to be honest with you guys, we also want to have opportunities for people coming to the booths at OAX for Simone to be able to draw at the show live. Um, so we wanted to take you know one of these pre-shows so he could do maybe one at the show as well, rather than mm -hmm. just one in general. Very nice. Well, Aranga did get that one, so congrats to Aranga. We uh, we're all happy for you. Uh, Psylocke as Aranga. <laughs> I was thinking that. I was thinking that, but I, didn't, I wasn't going to say it. Uh, so here, well, let's go ahead and take a look at the third tier because this is the cover quality on the uh, A3 size. So this is priced at thirty five hundred dollars. Again, limited to one spot on this one, and. I remember when we were talking about this particular piece, you know, one of the things that Simone loves to do is just kind of put a, put a lot of narrative in his works as well. Yeah. And, you know, in this one here, you, you know, you can see different scenes woven within the spider webs. Uh, you know, you see the gun casings uh, from Uncle Ben uh, getting killed and, you know, just, just a great image here. And again, literally cover quality. Yeah, and try, try to tell a story try to tell a story when I do a composition for a commission. And yeah, you can find all the Spider-Man story in some uh, panels right now. And uh, yeah, it's j just try to fun, to, to have fun to doing commissions. I love it. Uh, Bill, if you can put me full screen real quick, I wanted to show because- Yeah, yeah, sure, let me- Simone, uh, uh, I have a piece here of mine that I was lucky enough to get. And uh, Simone actually will say this in his own words. So Simone, back me up here is he loves doing commissions uh, at the cover quality because he can really, doesn't have to go with the story that's already there. He can make his own story and he puts his full effort into it. So I have to share this. I'm a big uh, death dealer collector. I have, I don't know if you can see him on the walls here, but uh, I thought Simone's style would really just pop on this and my goodness is this just insane i mean the horse looks like it could ride right out of the uh right out of the page um oh my gosh so look at that reading, i mean it's it's just unbelievable i mean this piece is just a, a true masterpiece it's crazy so i wanted to, i wanted to show this because uh this is just such an amazing um piece of shading and you know use of, of black and grays to be able to you know show just an app, like it's a black horse, but you can still see the sheen on them. I just think this piece is, is really stunning. So I wanted to show it for what you'll get. Chris, thank you very much. Appreciate it, brother. Chris, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mr. Snork got that one. Thank you, uh, Chris. My uh, my compadre every Thursday night on the CAF update. Has picked there you one. go. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. And now we got one thank left, you. guys. And this yes, one is pretty crazy. Indeed it is. So this is a yeah. double. This is double. insane. Yeah, this is. <laughs> This is huge, and the, it uh, is priced at six thousand dollars and limited to only one, as we uh, we mentioned. Yeah. So this is the a, last one we have. A available. lot of work. I, a lot of work, right? A lot of work, guys. A lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, this it's is a the, big the, one. <laughs> so Simone, you've only ever done one of these, correct? And it's the one we're looking yeah. at. Yeah, just this, just this, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's so hard to do, but I'm it's so funny, so fun. And I got it's to see this in person, and, and when he unfolded it, you know, as you can see, it's it's the double A3, and when he unfolded, I literally was like mm -hmm. blown away. I mean, uh, and Simone, tell me about the background research you did on Azrael Batman, you know, to yeah. get prepared for this piece. Yeah, I, I uh, it's the first time that some someone asked me about the uh, Batman Azrael costume and to doing um, the, uh, every, every time I'm doing, I'm doing commissions, try to, um, to study 
uh, the character, to read some comic book about the character, because it's important to me to have an, an idea about the character, about the environment, and try to read some. And uh, I try to put uh, some origin of the power of the Azrael in the in the church uh, background, and to 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 have a good background to to tell a story and try to do every time. Because because it's funny because for me the commission is like a a relax relax uh, moment. I can do I I can do uh, I can do uh, a lot of different things from my normal work from Batman Robin right now from the covers. Try to to have other characters and just just happy to do. Yeah. So guys, this one. Oh, go ahead, D Daniel Earls. Yeah, thank you for the wow, uh, super chat, Daniel. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. And you know, guys, this is um, you know this opportunity will remain open. Uh, if everybody's got my email. Feel free to to send it in uh, if you have any questions or you want to work on a payment plan. Um, but I know overall, guys, um, everybody's got a lot going on this weekend. There's a lot of amazing artwork out there. So I just wanted to say. Uh, thank you for everybody for taking the time to come in, not only uh, claim, just being in here, just uh, being a part of it. We really appreciate it. This is literally why I do this stuff and uh, what keeps me you know, going and so passionate about it and, and being able to work with Simone and Bill, um, really just dream type stuff. So very happy. Uh, I don't want to take up too much more time because I know Bill's got Jiggy next, who's got an arsenal of artwork. I, I do, and I'm not, I haven't finished making all the slides yet, Jiggy. Thank you for so, giving me so many pieces of art to have to make slides out of. But uh, I'm going to be working right up until the 9 p.m. Eastern uh, time frame. But uh, again, Simone, you know, I, I'm really looking forward to getting to meet you at, at OAX. This is going to be the a lot same. of fun. It really is. I, and, same and Matt. Uh, you know, likewise, just getting every, you know the team together there for the first time. I think you know OAX is going to be a really special event. I think for everybody that can make it, and um, you know, as everybody knows, the, the address for OAX, uh, the web address is oa-expo.com. So if you're we're on the fence about coming, now you can see just another reason why you know it's not a show that you want to miss. This is going to be a, a really, really, really special event, and. Um, I mean, I, I can't wait for it. And I'd like to think most people in the hobby can't wait for the opportunity to get together and, and have that uh, opportunity to hang out as well. I see Kazra in the background, but he probably doesn't want to get, uh, does he want to pop in for a second? No, he's flipping me off. And like, no. <laughs> well, I just wanted to say, you know, uh, it's a, it's, it's going to be in, you know the inaugural show for OAX, which is a show that I'm, I'm not even hoping. I'm sure is going to go on for years and years and be the premier place for true art collectors without the fun code, the stuffed animals, the plushies. Yeah, to really yeah. come in and enjoy. And uh, one of the biggest things I'm looking for is to getting to meet everybody that I've seen in these chats throughout the full year. And uh, you know, if you want to come in and uh, see the launch of the Julio Art Collective as well and Simone Squared, it'll be our first convention uh, that we're doing together. And I couldn't be, yeah. you know, th more thankful thankful to be doing it with Bill and Kazra at the first OAX. So once again, thank you guys. I really appreciate thank it. You guys. Thank you guys for, for, uh, for the support. Uh, can't wait to see you in Orlando. Uh, yeah, really. So, yeah, it's going to so be a lot of fun. So, uh, so hang out, guys, when I close the stream for a second. But uh, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. We've got one you, guys. panel today. It'll be 9 o'clock with uh, Jiggy and crew. We'll be looking at a lot of X-Men related art that I think people will be very interested in. Not nine to midnight. I got my, I just, I'm gonna go drink the Red Bull. I'm not missing anything tonight. It's I'm very not gonna be nine to midnight. So uh, uh, we'll see you then everybody. But again, Simon, uh, Simone and uh, Matt, thank you so much. We'll, uh, thank you. we'll see thank you, you in Orlando. Thanks guys.